Well, hello everybody. Welcome to PBM Money. Today, I'm going to do a video that has taken me 40 years to do. And when you hear why, you'll understand why. Now, there are two main reasons I got out of the business, real estate business, first time around. The main one was my wife got sick, and uh, the way we were doing it, it was a partnership. I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't hire it done. I just got out, took my lumps, and went on. The second reason was this video, a corrupt federal judge. Now, at the time, she was not a federal judge. She was a, uh, a misdemeanors court judge here in Illinois. Now, let me set the story. And I want, once I set the story, I'm going to divide this video into two parts. What I know for sure happened, what I suspect happened happened. So my wife and I at the time, we had about 32, 33 different properties and uh, we had a bunch of vacancies at one time and this young man came in and said, my dad owns a paint store and I have no money. And I said, I'll tell you what. Um, you mean the first month's rent, I'll forego the security deposit as long as you promise to paint the inside of it. And he said, okay. So we let him in, and he never painted anything, of course. And he never paid any more rent. So uh, I went to court, kicked him out. Then I went to small claims court to get my money and damages. So I go to small claims court. Now first off, I went into the property. <clears throat> now this was the winter time. All of the windows were open. And the heat was on high. My heating bill. Now this was a six story building and the thermostat was controlled from that apartment. So he had managed to get in there, crank that baby up, and open the windows before he left. This guy was a real winner. So I went in there, and of course there was no painting done. I took the pictures. He did a lot of damage. I took all the pictures. Um, it, was, it was a mess. It was just a mess. So we go to court, uh, into this judge's court, and now I'm going to tell you what I know for a fact happened. We sat down in small claims court, and he came to court in jeans and a t-shirt. I came in slacks and a button-down shirt. The judge walks in, never makes eye contact with me. Looks, as soon as she sat down, she looked at this kid and did this. So he goes up there and he hands her. Now, if you're not old enough, you may not know, but uh, ad adding machine used to have a little roll of tape about this wide that you would put in the back and as you hit the buttons it would spit it out and then when you hit total it would pop out and you'd pick it off. He handed her one of those that was no, no longer than that. It probably had three numbers typed on it. No writing, no signature, no date, just a couple of numbers. And I just happened to see it. She didn't bother to show me. Get the picture? She looks at that for two seconds, hands it back to him, sits down, 
and bangs her gavel and says, case dismissed. I popped up out of my seat and I said, Judge, you haven't even seen my evidence. I've got leases and I've got pictures and I've got affidavits. You didn't even bother to look at it. And she said, Mr. Carrier, sit down and shut up or I'm going to hold you in contempt. I said, well, that's some bullshit. She said, Mr. Carrier, I'm not telling you again. Sit down. She said, next case. So I stood up, I threw my chair under the table and I stomped out. That's what I know for sure happened. Here's what I suspect happened in addition to that. That six-story building uh, from this incident was condemned immediately. Don't know why, who, what, when, where, or how, but it was condemned. So, I was buying it contract for deed at the time. Those were very big back in the 80s. And within six months, that building had been tore down, paved over, and a new state building built there. Now, here's what I suspect happened. The people that owned that contract for deed knew that that was going to be a state building, which is one of the reasons I bought the building. And time was coming when they didn't want to have to fool with tenants, but they wanted the money. So they went to the judge and said, hey judge, what, how can we make this happen? And the judge says, no problem, let me, uh, let me see what I can do. So they send this bozo into this place to destroy it, make it inhabitable file a complaint, get it condemned, and get me out of the picture all in one fell swoop. And before you know it, the judge is moving on up the line. She becomes a federal appellate court judge. Uh, the people that own the property, they lined their pockets very well, and I got out of the business. That's what I believe happened. Now, why did I wait so long? Let's go back and just take a little bitty look at it, okay? He walked in looking like the poor, forlorn, worn down, take, took an advantage of person. I walked in uh, looking healthy and uh, well-dressed. So immediately, I'm the bad guy, I'm the boogeyman, I'm the landlord. And he's the poor downtrodden. So, obviously, and, and everybody knew this, she was a ultra-left-wing judge. I live in Illinois, a blue state. So, in order to make it uh, as a judge in this state, you have to be a blue judge. Now, why haven't I said anything before that she recently died um, and I didn't know that and I am still concerned um, that somebody that knows her might come after me so I'm not going to give you her name. I know her name. And everybody around here worships her. I do not. She was a corrupt, left-wing, unfair, um, judgmental, unfair judge. And just on what I know as a fact, I could have caused her trouble if I had had money at the time. If what I suspect I could ever have proven, 
There's a difference between people that have money and people that don't. If I had had a lot of money, I was irritated enough of the time, I would have hired a couple of detectives and I'd have put them on that case until they proved it. Because I know that's what happened. But at the time, I was young, my wife was sick, and I just decided this is not worth my time or effort. I'm just going to go back to 9 to 5 and get out of the business and stop worrying about this. Because if you live in a blue state and a blue judge treats you wrong, do you really think you're going to find justice? They have no problem at all saying or doing whatever that is they need to say or do to get what they want. Because it's not about helping, it's not about the truth. It's about spreading the narrative and getting what they want. That's all I wanted to say. And by the way, I want everybody to know I am not suicidal. <laughs> I, uh, I have not... I have not found my suicide note yet. I've been looking for it. <laughs> but I just want everybody to know it's time that the story got out. And if one of you uh, detectives out there want to go take a shot at this and figure out who it is and go prove it, contact me. I'll work with you on it together. Well, that was a reason, one of the two reasons, main reasons, I got out of the business 40 years ago. Um, and I, I'm i glad I did because I got to spend some extra time with my wife. But had I stuck with it, I might have learned a little quicker and been a little bit further ahead. And I blame this judge. You guys have a great day, a great week, and happy investing.